Can you hear me all right? I am using a earbud today. Uh, I'll say rather new, but let's make sure that I can check out this stream. Perfect, I beat my alarm for nine. <clears throat> All right, so let's see who's here. Come on, video details open. It says me. Oh. As soon as I get. All right, perfect. That is playing. Let's see. Kent says, Hey, yo, what up, Russ? How you doing? Uh, we're missing a thumb. All right, well, if you guys haven't already, there's a, a subtle reminder from Russ to hit that thumbs up button, please, and thank you. Victor says, howdy. Jimmy's here. He says, what's up, guys? Ron, I mean, Russ, maybe? Yeah. Guys, what has five toes, with, but isn't your foot? <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were. I thought that was a a Victor joke. All right. <clears throat> anyway, how you guys doing this evening? Hopefully everybody's doing well. <laughs> All right. I had to. Ooh. Let's see. Ooh. Ooh. I want to say I know better than drinking out the quart jar because I feel like I always over pour when I pour out of the quart jar. Let's see, what is everybody else drinking on this evening? I won't. <laughs> Jimmy says, looks like your number. <laughs> I try to keep it 100. <laughs> try to keep it 100. For real. Let's... Oh, yeah, buddy. That dissipates rather quickly. Steven! This is hey, yo, Dash and family. What's up? <sighs> Steven, how you doing this evening, man? Steven, thank you very much for checking in with me. So, Jimmy checked in. Uh, Steven checked in. Alton checked in. Alton's not here right now. Uh, he, you know, uh, Jamie uh, checked in. Marcus checked in. I appreciate you guys reaching out after you guys heard about the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Um, you know, and it's 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 been kind of I won't say kind of crazy. The 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 wild thing is, so <clears throat> I live or the exit for the beltway which is the thing that encircles baltimore the exit that i live off of is exit 13. the exit where the bridge is is exit one well basically the last exit is one so i'm technically about i guess the way the crow flies less than 10 miles away from where that bridge is and actually i didn't even really think about it i can see that bridge from my house um during the winter is probably or see the bridge from my area um because of where it is and you know how prominent it is especially during the winter but oh say you can't see it anymore um so but thank you guys um again for those of you guys who reached out just to make sure that i was well and the family was good Josh, what's up? What up? What up? So what do you think about all the things that have come out about the bridge? Jimmy, um, it really seems like, and I mean, you know, here's, here's the thing. Everybody's going to try to turn something into a cons conspiracy theory. I think there's just people who are bored as hell and like hearing themselves speak because, I mean... The ship had issues with, um, it seemed like it had mechanical issues, and it lost power. Then it regained power momentarily, 
and then it lost power again. And you know, you have a, a huge cargo ship, and one of the things that I is, is crazy. Some of the pictures and imagery do not do the Francis Scott Key Bridge, nor that ship that um, hit it, Justice. That ship is huge. That bridge was huge. But when something that is huge and heavy hits something that's huge and light, <gasps> bad things happen. So, I mean, I, I, I don't, mm -mm. yeah. Dave, blind man cooking. So what's up, Dash and Barbecue fam? Oh, Russ. So hit the thumbs up. <laughs> that bridge was nuts. Stay safe. Skeleton Crew Barbecue. What up? What up? What up? Quentin, what's going on, man? So I was my when I say I started receiving text messages yesterday at four. It was like 424, I think, was the first message I got. AM from Kirk. Uh, Kirk in Central Virginia, the one who built Bessie, Bernadette, and Vicky. He texted me, you know, was just like, hey, man, just checking in. I'm going to make sure everything was good with you. I'm like, all right, cool. So got back to him. Well, I replied back to him. But come to find out, my phone was not sending out messages. So while he texted me at four o'clock in the morning, I restarted my phone at 1020. And then all of the messages, a flood of messages, probably about 10 messages or so, went out all at the same time because um, Kirk messaged me. My wife messaged me like, hey, did you see this thing? And I'm like, yeah, well, you left the house. And, you know, we're, we're not big news watchers in the morning. Hold on. Mixing up, I, I just took a, a swig, a shot of, of the, the shine. So, Kirk reached out, Jamie reached out, uh, Marcus reached out, Alton reached out, Jimmy reached out, and then these are just people you guys know. And then I had other folks, you know, family, friends, and stuff like that reach out. And Jamie sent me another message about 10 o'clock or so or actually it was like nine 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 thirty. It's just like dude you're freaking me out and I'm like uh me why and I, that was my reply right so then Alton sent me a message via Instagram and he's like hey man I sent you a text message earlier this morning hadn't heard back from you you know really trying to make sure you're okay and I'm like the hell that's kind of odd like I replied to him and then I'm like, well, maybe that's what Jamie was talking about. So I said, all right, well, let me just restart my phone. So I restarted my phone. And that's when, boom, all of the messages went out. Because when I looked at the messages again, I could see that they were sent at 10.21 or 10.22 a.m. Um, so, yeah, there was obviously there was a lot of things going on happening in the area. And my phone not working was one of them. <laughs> Mark says, up, Dash? Left a like. Thank you very much. Uh, Court Tells is late to the party. Was uploading a review. What's up, Dash? Glad you're good. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah, Cortell was one of the folks that, um, he left a message. Not a message. He left a comment on one of the videos. And I meant to apologize for not responding, replying earlier. But, you know, sometimes I kind of look at, um look at comments in batches where I kind of like, all right, let me sit down and, and devote 15, 20 minutes to reply in the comments right now. And it'd be whatever time o'clock. RXTX says, uh, when I was in Dundalk Heights, I was close to that bridge. Never drove on it though. Um, I don't know about Dundalk Heights, but there's Dundalk. Um, I don't know of a Dundalk Heights, but that could just be my ignorance because I don't live in Dundalk or I won't say don't frequent Dundalk but when I do so the 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 bridge and you know so you gotta think about Baltimore City as a as a huge has a huge beltway um 695 so 695 goes the north side and all the way around the surrounding counties and it and it basically I'm gonna say straddles but it it encompasses all of Baltimore City and parts of Baltimore County well where the bridge is, let's say the bridge is like over here, okay, uh, and I, um, you know, 
it's backwards. Oh, no, I guess it... Let me see where it is, turns out. So, let's see. Yep. Okay, so the bridge is over here. I'm just making sure I'm looking at my cheating there. So, the bridge is over here, and there's, you know, like, the... Where it collapsed is by the harbor. Well, technically, the Severn River, which leads to the harbor. I mean, well, leads to the bay, rather. <clears throat> and, it, you know, it goes around and... On the one side is um, like Glen Burnie, Maryland, and on the other side is Dundalk, basically. Or actually, it's Sparrows Point, and then it wraps up and around into like Dundalk. I used to go over there every now and again because there's a city dump over there on Sparrows Point. But uh, since during the pandemic, Baltimore County uh, has, I guess, relaxed their dumping um well the city dump allowance and or the county dump allowance allowing city residents to dump the things there or maybe they just don't pay attention enough either way i take my stuff when i need to go to the dump a little bit closer and i don't have to go all the way over that bridge pay a toll all those things that are involved with going over to um going over there so <laughs> but yeah a funny story, actually, while I'm thinking about it. Uh, it's going to take so long to clean up and rebuild. I hope not. Um, Baltimore is one of the busiest ports in the United States. It's like number nine or number 10. And uh, so I, I heard something today or read something today that said that um, every day that that port is closed, it's a $15 million loss. $15 million. Excuse me. Oh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, Jimmy says we have to look out for the fam. Yes, indeed. Thank you, man. Appreciate you. So, funny story. The funny story I have from riding across that bridge. I was, I can't even remember what I was doing. I guess I was doing a delivery, maybe, because that's the only real reason I would be over on that, in that area. Because I just didn't, didn't frequent that whole, like, I, I whenever I would go into Dundalk or have to go into Dundalk, I would drive up 95 which is closer to my house and then in through the city to get over to Dundalk which is again in the county that being said I was coming across the key bridge or the yeah Francis Scott key bridge and just usually referred to it as the key bridge I was coming across the key bridge and I'm driving along and now mind you this is this was quite some time ago because I was in my Jetta, my, my, my Jetta TDI, the one I, I refer to as the mistress. So I was in the mistress and I'm coming across the bridge and I see a Maryland Transportation Authority cop. Now, mind you, like there are different levels of cops, right? These, the Maryland Transportation cops are the ones that patrol the bridges and the tunnels in the area. So this guy was sitting at the at the base of the bridge and I, in the median and I drove past him and I just knew I just knew he was coming after me for something. I'm like, maybe it was the window tent, something he was coming after me. So I'm I'm not speeding. Right. Because I know better because I know that these cops, these transit uh, transportation authority um, and they also oh, the bridges, ports um, and tunnel. Right, they that's where they monitor, that's their stomping grounds, more or less. And when I came down the bridge, I'm I could see them from you know half a mile away, and I'm sitting there, and that Joker was waiting. So I drive past them, and I'm you know kind of I'm doing the speed limit, driving past them. And mind you, I'm in a lowered car that has stickers all over it, and you know, I wish I could post a picture of my Jetta here, but so. My lower car with stickers all over it. I drive past him and, you know, I knew he's coming. So what do I do? I'm like, all right, well, let me do like five over the limit and I'm getting off at the first exit and I'm getting off at the first exit and I'm like trying to hide because I know he's coming for me. Sure enough, I see him pull out and he's after me and I'm like, what the hell, man? I'm like, I, I can't. Ah, so I get off and I luckily I know where I am because there's a gym, there's a Planet Fitness not too far away from where I got off. So I'm like, all right, well, let me just book it over to like the Planet Fitness and like get out and make like I'm walking into the Planet Fitness, you know, even though my membership is expired, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. 
So I'm headed in, you know, in the direction of the Planet Fitness. I get off the highway, off the on ramp, on the, you know, on the 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 surface surface streets, into the parking lot, and the dude, you know, he's he flying up, caught me. So he pops me, and he's like, "Uh, do you know why I pulled you over?" And I'm like, "No." And he's like, "Uh, your front license plate." Now we live, I live in Maryland. Maryland is supposed to have is a front plate state, right? So I'm like, no, what's what's the problem? He said, your front license plate isn't um, affixed where I can, it's visible from wherever. And I'm like, well, it's, it's sitting right here in the windshield. You know, it's not a, not a problem. And he's like, oh, it's supposed to be affixed to the front bumper. I'm like, mm, no, it's supposed to be visible from the front of the vehicle. I said, I actually, I, I got pulled over a few weeks ago. And because the, the, I said, I was in Baltimore County. I said, um, I got pulled over a few weeks ago and the cop told me, oh, it's there. I said, I don't have a front mounting plate on this vehicle. I said, I got into an accident, yada, yada. The, the, the front thing was gone when they replaced the bumper. I have something on order to put it into the toll loop. Blah, blah, blah. Dude was like, nope, you're getting a ticket. So I was like, well, sir, it, the, 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 the law says that it has to be visible from the front of the vehicle. It doesn't state that it has to be affixed to the front bumper. The preferred visibility is the bumper, but it, it just says it has to be visible. He's like, nope, I'm writing you a ticket. So he proceeds to go write me a ticket. So he comes back to the vehicle and he says, hey, um, well, Mr. Dash, um, I have some news for you. I'm like, all right, well, what's going on? He's like, uh, your license is suspended. I'm like, what? What are you talking about? He's like, um, your license is suspended. And I can't even remember why my license was suspended. I don't even remember. Um, and I'm like, what? Um, no, that, that can't be, that can't be right. Well, I think it was, I, I don't even remember. This, this is probably 10 years ago now, if not longer. So I'm like, mm, what the hell? So I'm like, all right. So he says, well, how are you going to get this vehicle out of, out of this parking lot? I'm like, well, unfortunately, I said, my wife is the only other driver in my household. I said, I have no family here. I'm not from this area. I said, I'm from Philadelphia. My family's all in Philadelphia. I said, it's just my wife and I. Now, mind you, this is when Taste of Number 2 was in diapers. So it might have been more than 10 years ago. I mean, it could have been close to 15 years ago. So I'm like, uh, my my wife is at home. And I don't remember if she was pregnant at the time with Taste of Number 2 or if... Um, she was, he was just really young. So I'm like, yo, um, it's just her and I, he said, well, um, you can't drive this vehicle home. I said, okay. He said, well, and, and basically he, he let the license plate thing go away or he gave me a warning for it after the whole not having a license thing. So, um, I'm like, all right. So he said, well, um, you can't drive this vehicle home. I said, okay. He said, but I'm leaving out of this parking lot. He said, I'm going that way. He said, I'll be back through this parking lot in a little while. I hope that you can figure out a way to get, you know, get yourself and this vehicle back home and get your license situation straightened out. I was like, sure will. And my man gave me the warning, was like, do, 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 do. I waited 39 seconds after he left the parking lot going that way. I went that way. <laughs> I drove my butt home, doing under the speed limit, <laughs> got home, and, and like I said, I, I did whatever was necessary, and I figured out what the hell was going on. Chef Earl, what up, man? How you doing? Uh, I want to say next time I'm in Florida, I'm going to try, try, try to figure out a way, I won't say to link up with you, but at least to come try to, to squeak past and break bread or, or do something, um, but you are not very close to where my mother-in-law lives in central florida but i will figure it out and um hopefully figure out a means to get down there uh chef uh she not chef uh sean what up what up how you doing man <laughs> of course i'm a damn criminal dash is a delinquent i am not a delinquent all the time paul what's going on man I'm going to get out because I'm going to haul out, y'all. Nope. Mm -mm. Rolling smoke barbecue. What's going on? Uncle Steve. He says, hey, buddy. What up, man? 
Uncle Steve, I have to find some ribs. My wife has banned me from buying more meat. <laughs> so I have to try to find some ribs in my freezer so that I can use that new rib magic. Um, after seeing Jimmy's video over the weekend, I'm like, all right, I got to cook some ribs for the family so that they can try this rib magic and uh, see what's up. Jimmy says, then they say there aren't any nice guys in law enforcement. Oh, trust me. He, mm, mm -hmm. he shouldn't have come after me at all, man. He was going to write me a ticket for, I'm telling you, that is the dumbest, not having a front license plate is the dumbest enforceable thing that you can like enforce. It is dumb. Okay. I mean, I understand why you want a front license plate so that, you know, obviously if, if a vehicle's coming in one direction and you're hopping in the other direction, blah, blah, blah. You want to be able to look at the vehicle with registration and stuff like that. I get it. But like to have nothing else better to do than to, and, and you know, here's the next thing. And I know you're going to say, well, when he saw the license plate, he pulled you over and he found something else. Yes. But I was unaware that my license was suspended. Like I have, I have, seriously changed my ways oh you know no, it wasn't even that one there was another time i found out my license was suspended after getting pulled over but anyway i like i said changed my ways uh so you did exactly what the officer wanted you to do he was paying back for the license plate bs yeah pretty much uh victor <laughs> so so here's the thing victor and i'm not so victor says so baltimore pit and I'm, I'm belaboring the point on purpose because I don't have very much to say about Baltimore Pit anything. Taj, what up, man? He says, peace. Taj, what's going on, man? Hey, Taj, I ho hopefully you are um, sipping on some sipping, sipping on some sauce. Uh, speaking of Steve, I made that tasty thick meat tri-tip this weekend. Oh, buddy. Uh, Newcomb says, always uh, carry a picture of Ben Franklin in your wallet. No, sir, not me. No, sir. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Ain't no way. No way. You will not catch me. See, and the thing is this, right? There are, you know how in your area, and I'm sure in your area, your, your area, there are those cops that just, you just don't mess with. In my area, the park police, Maryland State Police, the Maryland Transportation Authority, Baltimore County Police, Anne Arundel County Police, Howard County Police, and then the ones that you could kind of, I'm going to say, say something sideways to, Baltimore City, but in that order, you don't you don't mess with those organizations, those agencies, okay? And then I'm sure I'm forgetting one or two that are sprinkled in because some municipalities have their own uh, police, and then some areas have their own, you know, law enforcement no, no, no. There's not a game that you want to play. Not a game you want to play. Because, look, I like my life. And I like the things that I, you know, have gainfully employed or, or garnered from my gainful employment. And if I mess around and try to, you know, take a, give someone a picture of Benjamin Franklin. Pfft, mm, bruh. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. No way. I, mm 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 -mm, no, sir. Um, but it's just those. There are agencies that these dudes take their jobs way too seriously. And I mean, I get it. You're on the lookout for the bad guys. And you don't know me from anyone. I, I understand. But, yo, there are bigger fish to fry. And just because I simply don't have my front license plate which makes my vehicle ugly when i have a beautiful front end on my vehicle like no no anyway all right um uh that's recommend an uncle steve shake i already have a competition cow but i need a new profile russ thick meat and gator shake josh says gator shake thick meat um laughs in agency yo Man, Nigga says I was talking about more the city though. Uh, that 20, 26 years ago. Okay, Big E says, "Hey Dash, I took your advice. I did catering at my job, and they love my brisket. 
I got about 10 guys want me to cook a whole brisket for them. How much should I charge? 12 to 14 hour cook plus wood? So Biggie, I charge based off of the meat cost. Um, the, the, the rule, the typical rule is whatever your cost is, you triple it. So let's say your brisket costs you $3. Or actually, I know for sure, brisket is, in my area, it's $4 a pound, okay? So let's say you your brisket is $4 per pound, okay? So at $4 per pound, what you should be charging is at least $12, right? Or the base cost is $12. Now, here's something that a lot of people don't often talk about. When you cook brisket, you buy a 16-pound brisket, you cook it, you are left with eight pounds that you can sell. That's a 50% loss, which means your $12 is now $24 that you should be charging. At least, at least, if your market will bear you to charge a little bit more. I know I am currently charging, at the time of this recording, $25 a pound per brisket. So let's say you have an eight pound brisket that you're looking at $200. Um, and my average is I try to purchase about a 15 pound brisket, which gives me a yield of about eight pounds. That being said, I'm charging $200 for a whole brisket. You do with that math as you, you know, so choose. I know Alton was on here last week and he was like, my gosh, $200, that's a whole lot of money. Yeah, well, when you're paying a dollar less per brisket, that works out to be less money. Um, at any rate, there's that. Um, so let's, Victor wants to talk about, and Victor hit me up earlier and he said, he wants to talk about Baltimore and I hate saying Baltimore pit, you know, Baltimore pit, anything because I live in Baltimore. So it's not Baltimore pit. It's just pit beef, pit, turkey, pit, ham. All right. Those are the three things that you get off the pit. I don't do pit anything. I don't, I'm not from here. I don't. It's not my thing. It's not my style. It's not barbecue. And I've talked about this in the past. It is grilling. Baltimore pit meats are grilled. I do barbecue. I'm going to do low and slow. I'm going to do indirect. Pit meats are cooked hot and fast. And then they're sliced rare, usually. And there, there's that. Pit ham is literally lunch meat ham that's warmed up on a grill. Pit turkey is the same, like a lunch meat, butterball, minced, mechanically separated piece of, of meat that is warmed up on a grill, sliced thinly, and then put on in between a piece of Kaiser roll. <clears throat> now, the pit pit beef, that is something that I am actually a fan of to eat <laughs> because it's good. Now, we've talked about this before. There is a place in Baltimore that is one of the quintessential pit beef places in the area. It's called Chaps Pit Beef. Um, Chaps, the guy who runs it, his name is Rob. He recently, within like the last five years, started franchising his spots. And there are maybe three or five different chaps around the area. Uh, with that being said, <clears throat> I, there's a place that's closer to me that I feel I like better than I like chaps. Chaps has gotten a little bit commercial. Um, uh, Guy Fieri from Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives has been there a couple of times. And, you know, everyone wants the, you know, the, the beef experience and like, Chaps does a thing where they have uh, a couple different meats. So they do pit beef, pit ham, pit turkey. They do he does pulled pork, and I've I've talked about him in the past where I've been there and he's looking at me like, oh, you barbecue? Where's that place? You know, I've never heard of it. I'm like, oh well, I'm on the other side of the city, but I bring food wherever. Actually, matter of fact, I got some I got some pulled pork in my car. I you know I'll give you a couple pulled pork. You know, half a pound of pulled pork. You just taste it. Tell me what you think, and. He told me, he said, dude, when you get a stand or a shop or a brick and mortar, he's like, make sure it's not anywhere near me because this pulled pork is better than mine. <laughs> so, I mean, I've had interactions with the pit beef, pit beef folks, but I don't do pit beef um, because I'm not from here. This is, that is truly a Baltimore thing. Um, 
and it's not my thing to do to cook um i'll eat it but not to cook uh dash i use the work for the state parks namely the patapsco state parks uh 35 years ago nice um okay thanks appreciate it no worries biggie uh hey uncle steve keep an eye out <laughs> or for mm. there you go russ hey let's not forget those thumbs thank you thank you cortez has just learned something <laughs> i'm new to bar to the barbecue world uh Quentin says, what we cooking for easter i got some huge ass beef ribs and a pork booty chilling i you know what so actually well i guess the the pork booty will hopefully be a ham because you know I, I i i find it funny when people think that the pork butt is actually a butt when it's actually the shoulder and not the butt because the hams are the butt but anyway um i have nothing planned to cook for easter nothing i have zero orders I want to say more often than not, I go away for Easter. This is the first year I've been home in, I think, two, maybe even three years. Um, we typically would be possibly in Myrtle Beach. Um, or we've been in Florida. Like, we were in Florida the last year or two. <laughs> Uh, Russ says, phew, thank you, Quentin. Just reminded me to take a turkey out the freezer. Oh, you know what? I might actually cook a turkey. My wife told me she had a, well, she wants, she says she wants turkey breast. Uh, wants me to brine a turkey and smoke a turkey so she can have like individual portions, like just like snack sizes. Um, she's been doing like a meat and cheese type thing, like a meat and cheese snack. As opposed to buying said meat and cheese snack, I just, you know, like the last one that I did was some ham that she had and I like um, cut it up or put it into pieces and um, put some cheese with it and, and it was like her protein snack, whatever. Uh, Victor says, I was just wondering because I saw someone saying Baltimore Pit and I hadn't heard of it before. What I saw was, like you said, grilled beef, large cut like a roast. Yep, it is a roast. I couldn't even... This is how far removed I am. I can't even tell you what cut of meat it is. Um, I, I, I'm sure it's probably a cut that I can find cheaply because lots of people who make pit beef use it. But I I have never done it. Never done it. I'm going to say I've seen it done. And I mean, you can go places and you see people. Like I've been to, um, there is a, there's a caterer. It's like M and M caterers or like something. But the whole thing is I've been to this. I've been to their. They have a spot, right? They have a, a brick and mortar spot, like a catering hall. They have a hall and they cater at the hall. And I've been there for a, a taste test number one. His school was having a fundraiser and it was a um, not really a bull roast but but bull roasts are a thing again the, the baltimore thing and the bull roast is pit beef okay pit beef pit turkey pit ham and they're grilled and usually said bull roast could include all you can eat sometimes shrimp and like maryland uh crab soup so but the company that hosts or the company that provides food for this bull roast I got the information for it and come to find out that they hosted this. It was a, it was a, a bull and shrimp roast. Okay. Or a bull and shrimp festival or something. And they did pit beef, pit turkey, pit ham, and they did all you can eat shrimp. So my wife and I are like, bet, let's go. All you can eat shrimp. Bam. We're not, or she's not a very big pit, pit meat person. Um, she's like, it's just it's just smoked meats and you the thing is the the pit meats don't have very much flavor you have to add and with the pit beef you can add horse rad, horse radish mayonnaise barbecue sauce onions pickles and usually like when you go to a pit beef place either they have a list of the things that you can add to your sandwich or they have a counter that's just like dedicated to the accoutrement right so Especially at Chaps, you go and 
there's mayo, horseradish, and uh, mayo, horseradish. There's Mrs. Dash walking past, uh, distracting me. Mayo, horseradish, barbecue sauce, onions, and it's like raw onions and mustard. What else? Do you remember what else was that chapter? You haven't been there. You've never been in the store, have you? Yes. Yeah, she hasn't been in the store to be able to tell you. But there's a place closer to me where I live. It's called Pioneer Pit Beef. And I actually like Pioneer Pit Beef more than I like Chaps. And actually, I was over there about two weeks ago. And I brought sandwiches home for us. But my sandwich had horseradish, tiger sauce, which I really believe is just mayonnaise and... Which I believe is just mayonnaise and... Oh, God. Only time always talks to me. I didn't even say any words. So. <laughs> right, yes, I will open up this package for you. Thank you. Irish cheddar. I'm going to take a piece of Irish cheddar since it's right here on the end. And St. Patrick's Day just happened. All right, thank you. Gracias. Good <laughs> night, All right, so. But I brought home pit beef and pit turkey. I brought home pit turkey from my way. The pit turkey was very salty, uh, but she took it off the sandwich. I gave it to her actually off the sandwich, and um, she put it on the salad. So, yep, there you go, Paul. Pioneer pit beef. I'm just talking about it. I'm a couple minutes behind. Blind man says I'm cooking ham and turkey this Easter. Nice. <laughs> Cortel says um, the butt is the shoulder. This is wild stuff. Yes. So. The Boston butt is the butt end, meaning the end of the pork shoulder. And um, most people think when you say Boston butt that it's the butt of the pig, but it's the end of the shoulder. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, ham is the booty. Haven't done a shoulder pool pork yet. Okay. Um, scenes that cook would have been done best on the Santa Maria. Um... So, Victor, it's funny you say that. They use and do those cooks on a, it is a, it's not a Santa Maria type grill, but they, like, I want to say it's almost like a grill box where they just, you know, have open coals and then the meat is sitting on the coals. It's one of those things. Next time I go to a pit view place, I'll try to take some pictures. Um, it's the easiest way I can say because, and I'll send them to you, Victor, um, because it is like a Santa Maria, but not like the Santa Maria, you know, you have a chain and a, and a drive where you can spin your meat up and down. This is, is you know, it's at a set height um, and you just cook. I believe it's uh, round roast based on texture. Don't forget the oysters on the half shell. So yeah, man, um, oysters are another thing in Baltimore that are a staple. Um. <laughs> Blind man says he has a shoulder he's going to smoke soon. Nice. Um, Steven says, Dash, have you ever been a supporter of a small barbecue or any food establishment where the food is really good, but as soon as they open up more establishments, their standards drop immediately? Funny you say that. Chaps, the original Chaps location is a staple. Chaps has opened up a few different uh, franchises. One of those franchises is in Glen Burnie. The franchise store that was in Glen Burnie did not survive the pandemic. And I want to say it did not survive the pandemic. It was going downhill prior to the pandemic. And basically what ended up happening was they couldn't find or keep people in the store during the pandemic and the store closed. Um, and it's not reopened. So, yes, um, Mm. <laughs> Nugum says no mayo, horseradish, and the rest of the stuff. <laughs> Jimmy says, with all the smoked meat we cook, what do you turn to the wife? Uh, turn to when the wife says enough. Chicken wings seafood. and seafood. Yeah. No. She says seafood more so. I went pescatarian when it was enough, remember? Yeah, she's... When I said it was enough, I went pescatarian. I'm, you know. 
Pistachio mix, but almonds and cashews. Why they gotta mess up the pistachios? Just stop the pistachios. Why you gotta add extra stuff? Because the other stuff are yummy. Mm -mm. Pistachios, yay. Cashews, yay. Almonds, they messed it up. Mm. <laughs> this says you better get a piece, huh? Victor says he's cooking baby backs this weekend. <laughs> this is excellent. Caden, how you doing, man? Caden, you married yet? <clears throat> I know what you're saying. It's the pits they use in the Carolinas when they're whole hogs. Similar, but the pits that folks use doing whole hogs are covered or have lids. These don't. <laughs> Nugo says, keep up the good fight, Dash. Yeah. You better get a piece of that too. I I did. I did. I took a you know a cashew and a and a um and a pistachio. Chachi! He says, hey yo, what up? Russ says, what's this new cooker I saw? The new cooker is Johnny Five. It's not a new cooker. Those of you who have been around know that I bought that cooker um three years ago now. Maybe even yeah, three. Four years, shoot. I think it might have been five years ago. It was almost the summer, but towards the end of the year prior to the pandemic. Uh, El Barrio says, Que paso, Dash? Que te paso contigo? Not a que paso conmigo. Uh, Jimmy says, Yep, Victor. There's uh there's one in my backyard. Kane says, Oh yeah, going on two years of marriage. That's what's up, man. El Barrio says, uh, or Steven says, El Barrio, what's up? <laughs> uh yeah, Russ says, okay, thought so. Yeah, man, that that was the whole thing was I was looking through my videos and I'm like, I thought my wife was coming back over here to hand me something else to open up. I'm like, God <laughs> woman. <laughs> Mm-hmm. She said, you know you want me over there? Mm-hmm. Let me put this camera on pause real quick. <laughs> but my headphone is on. I, I got to mute you first, then put put the camera, then lay the camera face down. Um. Well, congrats, Caden. I know it's been a, a hot minute. Um. And didn't you buy a Ford, Caden? I, I, I swear I saw you bought a Ford. I haven't... I haven't seen you post on Instagram lately, but I gotta, I gotta, I feel like I need to catch up with Caden and see what, what he's been up to. Um, Russ said, that's one that rolled over when you were loading on a trailer. Rolled over. No, 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 no. That was, that, the one that fell over was my old rectangular grill. That was a... Oh, goodness. I can't even remember what the brand of that grill was, but this is the one that I, this is Johnny Five, the five foot grill table. That was a short for me picking up that grill. Jimmy, do you have videos in the cooker? Victor, he does have a video of him. He made, excuse me. I was going to say he made a whole hog, but no, I think he made some pork shoulders in it. But he has a video on how to make a pig cooker out of cinder blocks. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> El Barrio says, Volkswagen for your personal license plate. So funny. That was one of the options that I had on the list. I had about 20 different personalized plates that I had on my list. Well, Volkswagen was one of the... And I, 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 I can't remember if it's six or seven characters in Maryland. It might be seven. So um yeah, it was it was on the list. No sir, I still have the same old Chevy. Ugh, still a loser I hear. Uh Jimmy says uh yes, not very long ago, Victor. <laughs> Russ says El Barrio, great plate. Uh let me drive the boat. Uh no. <laughs> too soon, too soon. Like, it, yo, it was cats. It was cats making jokes yesterday morning by like 8 o'clock. And I mean, 
Hey, Kim, did you put that cheese away? Yeah. Oh, okay. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look, look at this. She actually likes me. Look at that. She gave me a couple of pieces of cheese, some grapes, some mandarins, some apples. What? Mm. She's trying to tell me something. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. <laughs> Russ is nice, Mrs. Dash. <laughs> mm. Now, if I could only tell you what kind of cheese. Hmm? I was saying, if I could only tell, mm, I don't, I don't like that one. You don't like that? No. You want some peanut butter? No, no, no. This is fine. I'm, I'm gonna make do. Uh. Uh, Russ, or excuse me, Jimmy said, I believe I'd marry that girl. I did. <laughs> Unfortunately for me. <laughs> I'm a sucker. She told me I was stuck with her. She ain't a lot. Mm. It'll be 20 years this year. Mm. Um, Victor says, sorry, I missed it. I'll try to find it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Nice. So Caden says, um, crazy I haven't been on here in forever. We are moving, and I pulled out an old wooden box out of the attic with your stickers on it, and it made me think to get on a stream. Well, damn. See? You know, I love when stuff comes full circle. <clears throat> so, I want to say truth be told. So Caden has been following my channel ever since I built the trailer. He was... In high school, when he started watching my channel, and he was a, and I, I can't remember what, he was a welder, or in like a welding vocational type school, or, or at least vocational area, and he found my channel because I was building the $50 trailer. And when I say, Caden used to come on here and give me the most grief about my Ford, about my barbecue, about any and everything. He always had a Ford joke. And I would look forward to seeing Caden and his Ford jokes because of my E350. Now, just thinking about it, I've had Vanna, the Ford E350, I think it's going on six or seven years. I think recently it's been six or seven years at least since I've had that van. And Caden has been here since before that. Um, that being said, Caden has grown up <laughs> and gone away and come back from time to time to, you know, I'm waiting for a four joke, Caden, because he loves his bow ties. Um, yeah, he loves his bow ties. But anyway, let's see. Albario said we did 100 plates of chicken drumsticks and sausage with rice and potatoes for another successful church fundraiser. Nice. Nice. Uh, Steven found that video for Jimmy. Cinder block and barrel burn. Mm. I remember that video. Mm. Man, Mandarin is good. Hey. Ooh. <laughs> um. <laughs> hmm. Though, but Jimmy was talking about how, hey, what? Mm hmm. So, Jimmy's video was talking about how, hey, let's make a pig cooker out of cinder blocks, yada yada. Um, Russ, I got you in a second. Um, and he made a burn barrel with the. Cinder blocks. She gave me something to eat. I might be able to pour a little bit more in my cup. <laughs> Kane says, I guess I'm all growing up now. I drive anything with air conditioning. Bruh. Sure enough. <laughs> sure enough. <laughs> See, Kane's not easy to please. One, he liked my videos. Two, 
All he needs to make him happy is air conditioning. No. Quentin, my wife grew up in the same zip code I did in, in Philadelphia. We literally, I've known her since, I was a teenager, but literally, like since high school, I've known my wife. Her mother-in-law now lives in Florida, um, but again, I grew up on this block, and three or four blocks away was where my, my wife lived. I don't say our entire lives, but I grew up on that block. She moved to where she lived when she was young um, and lived there the majority of her life before she and I moved out together. <laughs> All right, Caden, you be easy, man. Tell the missus I said hello, and thank you for stopping by. Don't be a stranger, man. Next time, come better prepared with some four jokes or something. All right. Thank you, sir. Like I said, be easy. It's W-O-U-D-E-R. Water. Water. Quinn says, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember now. You the one that can't remember nothing, and yet you trying to come for me. Who do you think you are? <laughs> oh. Am I the only one? I have a cut. I got a cut on my... On the inside of my pinky finger, it there it is right there. It hurts like hell, and I don't even know how I did it. <laughs> mm. I'm just gonna let you, you know, Quentin read that one. I'm gonna enjoy my apples and my cheese. <clears throat> It was just behind the crease, just just behind it. But yo, I cut my I cut my index finger the other day. I was opening up a bottle or something, and my my hands, and where did they get so dry from washing my hands so much? And when I say I put the deepest cut on my finger, oh, so you guys saw that video last week or two weeks ago when I was slicing brisket and I had a glove on my right hand. That was because of the cut that was on my finger. Yo, it was the deepest, driest cut I've had in a long time. And it was right on the crease. Like, you can still kind of see you go, a little bit, like right there. It was right where my finger folded. Every time I moved my hand, I could feel this cut. It was like, ah, worse than a paper cut. <laughs> Quentin says, I'm old. You're still younger than I am. You're not old. Did you catch any fish last week or two weeks ago when I invited you to my house and you stood me up and you told me you were unavailable? We even now, sucker. Blind man has his mystery cuts. Been there. Um, <laughs> mystery cuts. You don't see any of your cuts. <laughs> Russ says, maybe take a little sandpaper pads to that keyboard at the work. Tough in these hands. Psh, man, listen, my hands are tough, and that's the problem. My hands are tough and dry uh, in the winter because I'm, when I say I wash my, I can wash my hands seven, eight, ten times a day. Um, aside from when I'm going pee. Um, I go outside, do something, come in the house, wash my hands. Leave out of the house, come back in the house, wash my hands. Tezos number one, he doesn't realize it, but he is the one of my children that washes his hands almost immediately as soon as he gets into the house. Um, and I notice it, he does it self, self, um, subconsciously. I don't say self, but subconsciously. Um, but it is a thing that I notice. You know what? <laughs> that was funny. I... 
booked a cruise, sent the information to my wife, and she didn't even mention it to me when she came downstairs. I don't want to say I told her I was going to do it, but I didn't tell her I was going to do it. Ever been to the Mason Dixon Barbecue Supply? I have, actually. Um, <clears throat> I have been there. I've been there once, and when I went, it was before I was, it wasn't really before I was doing video, but it was before I felt comfortable doing video in public places, if that makes sense. <laughs> Blind man. So, Dave, I just appreciate the fact that you um, are not offended by light ribbing. Um, and you can't see when I'm giving you the finger. <laughs> um, for reference, I didn't give you the finger. Don't tell him I gave him the finger, guys. Don't tell him. No one comment. Okay. <laughs> Marcus. What up, man? He says, aloha, everyone. Marcus, what's up, man? This is bro. You invited me Saturday afternoon. I'm rolling to the boat in the river, and here you come with a come over message. Yo. I mean, listen, it was one of those, it was last minute. That was the whole thing. It was last minute. I was like, and I said, I know it's last minute. But, you know, come through. Because the whole thing was, I wasn't planning to do anything. Oh, gosh. If you would have texted me like two hours sooner, I would have been there. Kayak on the roof and all. Well, that's the thing. So, I do think sometimes when the spirit moves me. And the spirit moved me to get to cooking in the kitchen. And I'm like, hey. Quentin might, you know, enjoy hanging out. And... I was like, yo, come through. Literally said, um, you know, blind man says, I actually have a little vision left. Oh, okay. Note to self, don't give him the finger. Oh, maybe I should turn the lights out. Like, how does that work, Dave? Is it, is your vision better, like, with bright lights? So, like, if I dim the lights where I am, you can't see what's going on? Uh, you know, in, for science, inquiry minds want to know. <laughs> Russ said, yes, he did. <laughs> the finger joke was hilarious. Oh, thanks, Quentin. Um, but just as Steven, I smoked the turkey a week ago and was making a video. I forgot to hit record the last half of the cook. Oops, I'll do another turkey in about a month. Maybe I'll record the whole cook next time. Dude, <laughs> mm. Dave said, I heard that. Oh, man. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yo. There's big tings of guan. I want, I'm like, I so want to tell you guys about some, some things that are happening. But you're going to have to wait and see. Like, I'm I'm excited to, to talk about things happening. Um, Excited, excited, excited. But um, I've got to try to figure out if I can cobble a video together for tomorrow the i want to say the video i should have filmed because my wife and kids are home i didn't film anything oh and actually because i was on the baseball diamond all day yesterday i didn't film anything tuesdays are typically my my day to cook something in the house and film something so that i can edit it on wednesday or edit it tuesday into wednesday and then have it go live on thursday but that didn't happen uh, Susie says, hi, everyone, Dash fam and barbecue family. Happy early Easter. I hope that's what that says. Happy early Easter is what it says. Sh oh, wait a minute. Hold on. I'm sorry, Susie. Sean, just the S reminded me. Sean, where you been? Where you at, man? Sean came on, came in, popped on and said, hey, what up, what up? He hasn't said a single thing else. What's up, Sean? You know, but Susie, how you doing? Um, Hold on one second. I have to get something for Susie. Hmm. Hmm. Right here, yeah. So tell us, fool. Give us a little tease. Put a little leg out there and take it back. Yep, that's what I'm gonna do. Or oh, actually, that's what I did, Quentin. I did. I I did that. I did that. <laughs> uh, Russ says, "Hey, Susie. Same to you. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Definitely happy Easter. 
Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Some cheese and some apples. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> it's like a charcuterie board. Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett is she? Hold on. I gotta figure out. Mm. Oh, he's like second string. Hmm. But he took it. I'm about to say the name was familiar or wasn't familiar. Alright, so I'm saying he just got drafted by him, but I guess he's coming to the Eagles. I'm saying anyway. <clears throat> I will admit, I'm an Eagles fan primarily during the regular season. Mm. Uh, Sean says, I'm here multitasking. I just want to, you know, I, I just want to bring folks into the conversation. But Sean, I, you know, here's something. I need everyone to comment down below, Sean, make another video. Please, if you, you know, if you like what I do on my videos, I need you to comment, Sean, make another video. I know you don't know what Sean's videos are about. I'm telling you, I need you to comment, Sean, make another video. Okay? That's it. Sometimes, you know, when someone asks you to do something, you just blindly say, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Josh said, Sean, sorry. Don't apologize, Josh. It was worth it. And Sean knows that he should make more videos. I'm going to say he gave up a little too soon, but it's... It takes grinding to be a king. <laughs> Yo, ooh, speaking of Mike Jones, I'm at work on Monday. And I'm kind of meandering. Like, when I'm at work, I do what I have to do. I go where I have to be. I'm, you know, so I'm coming back from uh, coming back from getting my lunch, and I'm in the elevator. And I see this dude get on the elevator. And I'm like, Yo, you getting on? He's like, yeah. So I, I'm, boom, I go to floor three. It's the floor I'm on. I said, what floor are you going to? He's like, two. I'm like, all right, cool. Got you. So we're on the lower level. So lower level, first, second, third. So we're on the lower level where I got on. I go to the back of the elevator, like the, the corner. And I look over at my man's badge. My man's badge said Christopher Wallace. <laughs> I chuckled. I said, <laughs> Christopher Wallace, huh? He was like, yup. <laughs> it just was like, yup. <laughs> I said, bruh, wow. He was like, yup. <laughs> I said, wow. I said, yo, I used to work with a guy named Mike Jones. And his response was, who? I said, my man. <laughs> my man. And then the ding, because it was his floor. I said, yo. <laughs> I was just laughing. I said, yes. I said, yo, he used to walk past my desk every day. And every time he walked past, I'd be like, who? <laughs> so, and it was like the height. I worked with him when the height of Mike Jones and Paul Wall were, you know, were, were the thing. So, 
Yo, it was it was just it was kind of funny. Victor says, "Heck, I uh, talk turkey." And Dash puts on his turkey hat for, or he gets, or has he been wearing it already? Oh God, I see what you did there, Victor. Instead of go birds, just smoke some birds. Yeah, show him, make a damn video. Go ahead and say smoke birds. <laughs> smoke birds, not meth. That's one I um, see. Um, recently, I've seen a couple times of memes that are like smoke brisket, not meth. Uh, Josh said, nah, I spelled it wrong the first time. Okay. Sean, make a video. <laughs> Steven says, Sean's laughing because he knows I'm right. He knows I'm right. Qu oh, look, Jimmy says, Sean, what the hell? Blind man says, Sean, make a video. Damn, you went to the office? Yes. I work with a Percy Miller. We always have no limit jokes for him, yo. I do not like Master P. I do not like Master P. It, it just... Something about that dude just rubs me the wrong way. I have never, never been a fan of Master P and No Limit. Like, never, never. Yo, like, you, you know how the Make Him Say Un starts out? Dun, 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 dun. Yo, by the second dun, dun, I've already changed the station or fast forward to pass the song. Yo, I do not want to hear anything, Master P. I just don't like that dude. I don't know what, yo. I just, not a fan. Not a fan. So, but, but see, I know who Percy Miller is. And I respect his hustle and his grind. Quentin about to get put on timeout. <laughs> Mm, I swear, his that uh, it just sounded like he was constipated to me, and it just irked me to no end. Irked me to no end. I'm like, dude, this dude made this song sitting on the toilet trying to take a shit, right? Uh, bro, nope. I was just not a fan. Busta is cool. Again, not uh, so. I'm from Philly. Busta, New York, cats, cool, cool. Um, scenario, man. Mm. Please, in a new school, Trap called Quest. Oh yeah, fan of Busta Rhymes. Fast Buster, slow Buster. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, bro. <laughs> uh, well, Sean, I'll say hit me up. Let me know what the what the other channel is. And I'm gonna say I'll support, but I'll I'll at least try to look at it. Um Victor says, I got to get up early, so I'm off the bed. Good night, all. Thank you, Victor, for hanging out. Russ said, I greatly appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up and give a like and comment. And hey, buy some merch. Oh, <laughs> Thank you very much, Russ. I actually suck about talking about the merch and stuff like that. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, please, please, and thank you. I'm, uh, you know, I'm always interested in hearing about what you guys are interested in. I mean, you know, you guys know I'm interested in things, too. Like, here's one of the things I'm interested in. This is a Canic. You guys know how I love my Canics. Another one. <laughs> here's a new Canic coming out, and I can't wait. Can't wait. Oh, Russ asked about a optic for AR. I am a big fan of Hollow Suns. Um, I don't know. Yes, Quentin. Um, there are shirts. Um, <laughs> and stickers. Um, but the shirts are linked under every single video. Um, but 
Russ, I'm a fan of Hollow Suns. I love my Hollow Suns. Um, I do not own a Hollow Sun Optic for any of my ARs. Um, all of my pistols, like my carry pistols, all have Hollow Sun 507, 508, or EPS carries on them. <laughs> A blind man says you have merch. Yes. So underneath the underneath the videos under the in the description, and I I was holding up my my shirt my hoodie because there is um, the ability to purchase shirts that they say still drum smokers from it used to be Teespring, but now it's just Spring. Um, but there are links underneath the video for my spring merchandise and actually links in the description, um, order your still drum smoker shirts and this teespring.store. Let me make sure this link still works. Yeah, it does. Um, but it's one of those things. Oh, I think when I try to copy and paste this into the video, like into the chat, it doesn't like it. Yep, I don't think it likes it because it hit the maximum character. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I have to... Mm -mm. I have to figure out how or what, where the cutoff is for this link because... It's too much stuff here. Hold on one second, guys. Uh, I think I found it. All right, so there, oh, yeah, there's the link to the store. And there are, there's long sleeve t-shirts, hoodies, there's an apron, there's a couple different things there. But search out and find the lower priced merchandise. There are some merchandise that's a little bit higher than the other merchandise because something happened with the store and, and I haven't been able to figure out how to change all of the pricing. Uh, yeah. Um, huh. Steven said, I'm old. I'm down with Run DMC and Heavy D. Hell yeah. Uh, Quinn says, let me grab some merch I never knew. How? Uh, LOL. The Tony Baker, I never knew. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do suck at talking about it because I'm like, my whole thing is this. I don't, I don't know. I won't even say I ain't too proud to beg. But it's one of those things where if you want to support, throw a couple of dollars at me. Throw a couple of dollars at me. Hmm. Russ says, I'll keep you on point. That's for damn sure. He's reminding folks, yo, hit the thumbs up button. Buy some shirts. Buy some stickers. So, the stickers are for sale. Also, on my website, stilldrumsmokers.com. Um, there, you can not only find out how to order food, but you can also order stickers. I used to keep the stickers on a separate website, brbque.com. But I merged everything recently. My friend Andrew, who's Mac Boy, who um, has been, who has joined us multiple times on the group live streams, he helped me update my website. And if you haven't been to my website, please check out the website, stilljumpsmokers.com. S G E M T R E N. I do believe there is a page where you can... Oh, damn it. Not a hyperlink. Is the spring... Is spring a store you manage? Yes and no. Like, I put out the information, but spring spring does everything, I'm going to say, automatically. All of the orders and everything like that happen on the back end where I don't have to actually send out stuff. There was a point in time, and I say a point in time, it was quite some time ago, where 
on my website, I would well, on the BRBQUE website, I would have the ability to order T-shirts. Yeah, it was just T-shirts at that point. And I was going to the post office, sending out those shirts and, and doing that merch order type thing. And it just became a hassle. Um, so I stopped. Teespring came along and was, I'm going to say one-stop shop. And it's like none of the hassle and all of the, the upside. And that upside, like, really go through and look at the different shirts and other things like that. Because I have it set up where... I'm literally making like five dollars on a shirt if if that because I really just want you guys if, if you want to support you want to support I'm not going to put a shirt that costs me and when I say me cost the cost of the shirt is let's say fifteen dollars I'm not going to charge you fifty dollars and make you know forty well thirty five dollars per shirt that you order I'm like no so some of these shirts I was able like it's hard to explain, but there are some cheap options out there, and they are cheap because I'm not making it, I'm not making very much money on them. I won't say any because I think I'm literally five dollars or something like that. Mm. But. Excuse me, there are a few options. No, I did not, Jimmy. Oh man, Quentin said, order please. I'm gonna have to check. Oh boy, let me see, where is the... To go out to the page and be like, what didn't happen? Log in. I am not a robot. Oh, God. I hate having to do this verification stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What? Yeah, literally. So my profit three dollars and seventeen cents. I like I said, I'm not ordering stuff here to make a whole bunch of money. Pullover hoodie, nice. A medium, whatever. <laughs> um, Jimmy says loving mine. Is that a WordPress site? Um. Blind man, my website is it a WordPress site or a Teespring? My website is a WordPress site, or at least the old one was. Um, it is now Wix. Wix. It is a Wix site. It used to be WordPress. It is Wix now. <laughs> uh, Quinn says, "Well, enjoy my five dollars. That goes towards my Blanton sip. Man, you funny." Maybe I'll take a sip of Blanton's on your behalf. <laughs> Jimmy says, got my SDS BBQ t-shirt in a couple videos. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Josh says, Clinton is a little fella. Mm, he's a smaller fella. He's not a little fella. He's a smaller fella. But I don't know. I'm, I'm of the, I would say of the generation. Like it seems to, I won't say skip a generation because like my parents generation was all into tight stuff, you know, in the 70s and early 80s, whatever. My generation was not, not into that tight stuff. And then my kids, yo, they all about skinny jeans and joggers and wearing shirts and stuff so tight. I can see their pulses. I'm like, bro, that's young. That's, that's, that's too, that's. I don't need to see your pulse through your shirt, dog. Watch your tone now. I can stretch it to a medium. He can deadlift a kayak. Uh, okay. You know them kayaks are plastic, man. They, they don't. I don't say they don't weigh nothing. Uh. 
Quentin is a little fella. Sure, he's svelte. He's svelte. That's what that's that's what it is. He's svelte. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Man. I'm just I'm just so I'm excited because they don't carry enough money. Tight jeans, hog hog says. Yeah, look, you know when when your pants are so tight I can count how much in your pocket. That's a bad I wore Jenko jeans. So take that as you may. Yeah. <laughs> look, I wanna say I'm gonna do a look. Mm -hmm. Yep. I know exactly. I, I was, mm. but them, but see, you're Josh. It's we're in the same generation. Like that, just Jinko jeans just weren't my thing. Um, and Josh, correct me if I'm wrong. You're on the West Coast, right? Josh, you on the West Coast? Uh, Quentin says his kayak is 110 pounds. Ooh. Uh, blind man says I'm looking to create a site, but I don't code Wix, 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 Wix. Drop that symbol. Um, there are plenty of templates out there on Wix sites. So luckily for me, excuse me, I'm messing with the headset. Luckily for me, I have a friend who um, helped me with my website. I started with a WordPress website in the beginning. But WordPress and WordPress was was pretty simple, and you you know you can go and and download and use templates for free. And my WordPress website, which was free, the website itself was free. The URL, the domain, was not. So what I did was, and this might go over some folks' heads, but the domain I purchased my domain. The domain is a URL. So the www dot boom. So I own the the domain, excuse me, www.stilldrumsmoker.com. I had my domain program, excuse me, that last, last little bit of cheese and fruit is like rearing its ugly head. I had my domain programmed to point to my WordPress website, which was wordpress.stilldrumsmokers.com, which was hosted for free, which was the template was free, everything like that. So the whole thing is when someone went to stilldrumsmokers.com, they got pointed to wordpress.stilldrumsmokers.com, and it was a seamless transaction or a transition, and no one was the wiser. Um, all of the information that was on the WordPress website was mine, and only those people who were really in the know about how the internet worked would realize that, hey, stilldrumsmokers points to wordpress.stilldrumsmokers. But now I have my website um url is hosted through godaddy and my domain is hosted through wix so it costs me 22 dollars a month for my website and my online portal um to be able to make purchases and it, it actually through that wix site i have a few different urls um, that point to that Wix site or the URLs point to that Wix site and it's pretty simple and there's a lot of flexibility there for the 20 like I said $22 with tax um <laughs> hog hog uh only a couple oh Josh says he's only a couple hours north see I when you said that Inco or Jenko jeans J and C O jeans I'm like mm, that's a, that's a that's a west coast thing Oh yeah, Russ said I keep picturing the pants on Vanilla Ice. Yeah, five hundred ones are the tightest. I go thirty six, thirty six. <laughs> hog hog says Levi five hundred ones are the um, tightest. I was more cross colors and and Jabro. Ooh, see, this is how I know Sean and I are of the same age because yo, I had a cross colors jumper. Cross colors jumper never really had any jabro stuff jabro jabro i never really had any jabro stuff never never was that cool i wasn't i wasn't that cool but cross colors yo i had a cross colors jumper 
when you can buy a WordPress site off AWS or any cloud provider. Parachute pants and Kavarchis. Kavarchis? Kavarchis? Mm, you could tell he was New York. Uh, Jimmy says, what was that? Who was that that's saying, here I come to save the day? I know Mighty Mouse used to say that. Here I come to save the day. Mighty Mouse is on its way. Underdog. Nope, it was Mighty Mouse. Yep. There we go. Russ is Mighty Mouse. Yep, Mighty Mouse. Oh, yeah. What is five toes and isn't your foot? Russ is my foot. Back in the day was Lee, Levi's Wrangler, and Sergio Valentini. Uh, uh, Valen Valentin? Valentino. Sergio Valentino. Yo. Sergio. Is it Sergio Tech? Oh, Sergio Tacchini? Sergio Tacchini is making a comeback. Uh, so you can process purchases on Wix. Yes. Yes, you can. That was one of the reasons why my Wix site cost me what it did because um, I have a storefront. That's, that's what it is. I have a storefront on the Wix site. And what my friend did was he took and I won't say stacked. But he was like, all right, you're already paying for a Wix site. He's like, why don't I just hide this domain and then roll all of your URLs into, or he's like, I'll hide this URL or no, I'll hide this domain and roll all of your URLs to point to this main page. But we will mask one thing and do this other thing. And basically, when you go to strojomsmokers.com on the front end on your side from the Internet looking in to what I have it looks like one big thing. But if you were to go to brbque.com, it still points to the Stills and Smokers site, but I think I have it set up, or I think he has it set up, to point to the merchandise page, which is how I had it set up before. As, let's see. <laughs> now, nah, Ryder, what up? Roger, how you doing, man? He said, even I had some Jabros. Yeah, Valentini, yes. Cortez is cross... Cross color in grammar school. I was a Fubu Platinum, Fat Albert, and Rockaware in high school era. Yo, I never, never really wore Fubu. Like, I just, it was, it just, it was, it wasn't my thing. Like, Fubu was not my thing. Now, uh, Rockaware? Yes. I was a big Rockaware fan. I'm still, my nickname Dash comes from. Dang Dash. Um, that's how I got my nickname in the late 90s, early 2000s. And this is one of those things where my friends and I went to, well, we were out of town. We were in St. Louis, actually. We went to St. Louis. But before we went to St. Louis, my nickname Dash came from the fact that everybody in my group of friends, the, the five of us, um, and actually, you know, I don't know if you, if you are following me on on Facebook, I posted recently that one of my friends, a good friend of mine, passed away. Um, actually, it was last week. Um, but I went and and we had a funeral for him last Wednesday. Actually, it was two weeks ago now. But the whole thing was each one of us had a moniker, like a, a nickname from the Rockefeller clique, because we we swore, yo, we were we were just like that. It was. We had the five or six different personalities from the Rockefeller clique, and I was Dame Dash. I was always the one that was, I had the bottles, I was controlling the bottles, and I was always dancing with the bottles, right? That was me. I was, I was always the one dancing with the bottles. So the nickname Dash stuck, and when I say stuck, it's been 25 plus years that, they, that Dash is stuck. Um, so, but... One of my friends, he was like Hove. One of my friends was like Meek, Me um, not Meek, um, like Memphis Bleak. One was like Beanie Siegel. Yo, it was, like I said, we had different personalities all from the Rock and Roller Click, and mine was Dash, and it stuck. Um, Hog Hogs is not that, uh, that boy, not nah, from New Orleans, Rose. Uh, no. Mighty Mouse could lift a kayak. <laughs> Uh, that proxy is going hard. Yeah, Quinn. Uh, Russ said, April 22nd, me and a few co-workers are going to conceal carry class and paperwork. Nice, nice, nice. Cortell says, oh, wow. Blimey, I said, that's cool. Sean John. Sean John didn't 
No Diddy. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that out there. No, no Diddy. No Diddy. <laughs> yes. So Hog Hog said Fubu was kind of off brand. Exactly. Even though I mean, yo, what's the what's the dude's name? Oh, Damien. Damon. Damon. What's that dude's name? Who who created Fubu? I mean. And, and, like, I don't know what it was, but, like, it was definitely off-brand. Um, but I remember Boys to Men being spokesperson, spokespeople for FUBU. And I was like, ooh, like, FUBU? Nah, FUBU was discount. Damon John, there we go. Thank you. Um, FUBU was off-brand, for real. You know, so FUBU... And I'm telling you, like, just something that I will never be able to wear. Fila. Fila. I will never be able to wear Fila. Just like kids today are rocking Champion like it's the best thing out there. Yo, Champion used to be what you would get in the in the Kmart. Like, Champion was like discount, discount. That was, that was, it, like, off-brand. Bruh. Mm. Remember La Tigre, uh, like the, the, what was it, Lacoste? That, that tiger? Lacoste was an alligator, though, so no, it could have been that. But yeah, I, I couldn't, I can't, I can't do Fila. Like, I remember when I was a kid, uh, Sean says, we were forced to wear a champion. Yo, thank goodness I didn't have very many champions and stuff. I mean, I'm like, my mom wasn't the richest. I mean, we were lower middle class, but... Man, um, bruh, I remember, yo, I remember vividly going to the store and my mom bought me not one, but two pair of these Fila and they were, it was a, it was a boxer and I don't know if they were ready bows or I can't remember what boxer it was. But yo, she bought me two pair of the same shoe because they were on sale. And she was like, yo, you business. She didn't say yo. But she was like, you wear this one, and then when this one gets too bit too small, you wear this one. Yo, how about I sold those shoes to a friend of mine? Like I sold them. I hated those shoes. Hated them. I was like, yo, I hate these feel eyes. I'll do anything and I have to wear these things. I dogged the hell out of those shoes. And then when it came time for me to wear the second pair, I sold them. So I didn't have them. But, yo, he, when I say this dude, and I can't remember his name. I can't remember his name. But, man, I remember him. It was him, and he had, like, three different sisters. But one of his sisters' names and, and uh, was um, it was Fatima was his, was his sister's name. And I swear his name might have been Mike. But... Yo, and then like the the messed up part is yo we had a falling out me and this dude because this the shoes he didn't want to pay me for the shoes I'm like yo here's the shoes he's yo I got you in a couple days a couple days come and gone and then this dude's like disappearing yo nah we we had a falling out like it it came close to we was going to going to go to blows he finally gave me my money and uh, I let it go but yo that I, 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 it had to have been the summer like. 94 95 he rocked the hell out of these free lives and he thought he was tough 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 all right bro those are my shoes give me give me the money for my shoes yo <laughs> like you ain't, you ain't even pay me for my shoes but i just knew that i wasn't wearing them so but i remember having champion back in the day too mm -mm. them shoes didn't last long quinn said listen i'm gonna get judged uh <laughs> I wore express pants and American Eagle shirts growing up with Hollister hoodies. That was my combo with Burt. Bur oh, my God. With Birkenstocks, dog. <sighs> I'll sit quietly in the corner now. You know what, Marcus? I, I mean, not Marcus. I'm sorry. Quentin. I, I saw someone said Marcus. So, so Quentin, I'm... <sighs> I'm... I'm I'm not even going there, Quentin. I'm not. I'm just gonna leave it alone. But but that ex mm, explains a lot. Explains a lot. My man, my man said 
He wore express pants with American Eagle shirts and Hollister hoodies with his Birkenstocks. He didn't even say Burks. He uh, Birkenstock. He said Burks. Bruh, Birkenstocks? Birkenstocks? Uh, Hog Hog says, Forever I Love Atlanta. Now, I was older when I heard that song because not living in Atlanta, I didn't know that that was a thing. Forever, 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 forever. I love Atlanta. Like, I never, I didn't know that. Like, I was, we were driving to Florida, my wife and I were, and the kids, I'll say just her, we were driving to Florida, and um, we were listening to Sirius XM, and on Sirius, they had a, like, the 20, it might be like the 28th of the month, they, they highlight music from a different city, and whatever day we were driving to Florida, was Atlanta Day. And the video, or not video, and the, the, the loop, the music loop was six hours. So we were like 12, 14 hour drive. I heard the loop twice. <laughs> like, I didn't even know that, that, yeah. Mm, Cortell said, um, we were broke. I had Arizona jeans from JCPenney. We were shopping at JCPenney. That's better than most. Um, uh, Jerry, how you doing? He says, that's my bro. Long time. Yes, indeed. Quinn said, feel I were cool. The Grant Hill. Yo, was it Grant Hills? Now I'm going to look. Was it the Grant? No, it was a boxer. Let's see. Feel Boxer. Sneakers. Boxer. No. Boxer sneakers. No, it wasn't those. Like if I see the shoes, I'm like, yo, that was them. And it wasn't the Grant. It wasn't Grant Hills. Boxer sneakers, nineties. Um. Now I'm trying to find them. Hated these shoes. Looking at Vintage freaking feelers. I felt like I'm. No, it wasn't them. It's funny, these are, you know, vintage now. And when I say I. Not destroy them, but yo, I hated these shoes. These are the worst. <laughs> Yo, this is Vince's feel on 1997 OG dad shoes, grass lawnmower shoes. Bro, why can't I find these? I am. I'm going down a rabbit hole right now, and I apologize because I'm trying to find the specific. Is this in? No, that wasn't them. I can see these shoes in my mind. Bro. But after those, I was, I was like, I vowed to never wear felines again. Like, never wear felines again. This is nuts. I go, mm mm. This is how I'm gonna say this is how bad they were, but just so they were so corny. I hated those shoes. And she my mom bought me like she thought I'm sorry, she thought she was slick. But it was like let's see images. I wanna say I could if I could find them. Like I could like I said I could see them in my head. And these aren't it. But it wasn't the Grand Hills. It was a boxer. So, Fila, boxer, 90s. Shoot. I just 
don't know who the boxer was. I can't remember. Like I said, I can't remember if it was like Riddick Bo or somebody of that time. But anyway, enough about that. Uh, Josh says, well, it's bedtime for this guy night all. Thank you, man, for hanging out. Uh, Jerry says, miss you, bro. Yeah. Uh, Steven says, I'm still wearing Converse sneakers up to this day over 40 years now. Now, right, I said I brought my first linen suit from an Express in 91. My goodness. I've never had an Express, uh, excuse me, linen suit. Um, I've had, like, a linen shirt here and there. But, mm, Express fits me the best. Thick thighs, yo. American Eagle always had the BOGO on shirts. And they had the great polos and tees. Hollister hoodies were undefeated in the style and warmth. And Burks. Burks were gangster. Slide on and go. Birkenstocks and gangster in the same sentence, dog. I'm going to just... Moving on. Was Grant Hill that had that outline around him? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't the Grant Hill. I'm looking at the Grant Hills. It wasn't the Grant Hill. It was a boxer. I know. I know for sure it was a boxer that these shoes were. So now he's, he's reiterated my need to find the shoe. But it was a boxer that these these shoes were endorsed by, and. I'm looking at the Grant Hills, and I'm like, this isn't the one. Because <gasps> I'm looking at... Hold on. Let me just show you guys what I'm looking at here. Uh, switch. Switcheroo. These are Grant Hills. It wasn't those. I know for sure it wasn't those. I um, I remember Grant Hills, but it wasn't the Grant Hills. Those are on Amazon. What? Let's see. I don't want to visit the Fila store. Mm. My gosh, Paris Hilton. Fila. Yo, I remember. <laughs> then, um, the. The, um, K Swiss. That was another one. I would, I would be called dead before I would rock some K-Swiss. I would never. Chachi says he's lurking. Nope. Uh, how's your barbecue business going? Uh, thanks, Jerry. Uh, it's going. I have, um, I've been keeping busy doing things when I, I'm going to say want and need to. Um, but I've been doing... I've been moving in silence, man. Just every now and again, people hit me up and do different things. And I, I just take care of it or I, I get it done quietly and keep it moving. Um, I've been not trying to do a whole bunch of advertising when I've been selling food or having food for sale. But I'm like, bruh, I'm trying to... Look, I keep going on cruises and I'm trying to pay off these cruises I'm going on. So I'm like, you know what? We're going to sell some food. So I've been selling some food via Instagram and stuff like that lately. Kind of back to back to basics, back to the, my origin. Uh, Let's see. Quentin says his favorite sneaker growing up was an Allen Iverson's. Never had a pair, but damn, I wanted them. The zipper joints. Yo, Um, I don't know if they were zipper Iversons. Um, but I remember it was a big deal. I was, Iversons came out in like 97, 98. And that was when I was working in Models. And when I say we sold the hell out of those shoes, I never actually uh, owned a pair because I was a Nike guy. I'm still, I still am a Nike guy. Um, and never, never owned, actually, I won't say I never owned a pair of Reeboks, but I did own one pair of Reeboks. I had a pair of the Reebok pumps. Yeah, the pump, that one. I went to a footwear, it wasn't even a convention, it was like a, it was a sales event for Reebok, and they invited um, people from the sneaker industry that sold uh, footwear and shoes, and I was invited to go because I was department head at my Models store, 
<clears throat> and I got a free pair of sneakers. And I think I had the option of which sneakers I got, and that was the ones that I got. And yo, I love those shoes. They were so damn comfortable. Uh Quince is kind of like the peppers with the big ass air on the side, but they started to look crazy uh, after a while. All right, Sean says peace. He's got a big day tomorrow. Thank you, sir, for hanging out. We sure have stayed out for the jar tonight. Uh, <laughs> nah, man, I, just, I drank, I drank wine. Russ says we used to get Echo sweatshirts and pants straight off the truck. Uh, so to say back in the day, yeah. <laughs> Quentin says night, Sean. I'd be looking for a new video. Yes, indeed. Jerry says I'm trying to do my own barbecue business. Nice. Avia, nope, 850 was a big hit in the 90s. Dude, it's so funny. Like, I see, I don't know, I'm, I'm rather particular. And in, like, I could count on three brands that I wore in the 90s. Nike, and I want to say, we used to call them Saucony, but it's Saucony. Uh, Nike, Saucony, and Timberland. That was it. Those are the only shoes that I wore when I was able to start making my own choices and buying my own footwear. Nike, Saucony, and Timberland. That was it. That was it. Like, don't give me nothing else. I ain't want nothing else. Dude, I swear they weren't the Grant Hills. Unless it was the the first first gen of Grant Hills. But I, this, this, I'm... It wasn't it wasn't that one. Like I remember that one, but it wasn't that one. But this dude so this dude was uh a Muslim Jamaican and he loved Felas. That's why I said he, he bought these Felas for me and I, I swear I, I don't know why I'm, I keep wanting to think his name was Mike, but Let's see. Fila endorsed boxer shoes. Let's say sneakers. These. Damn it. I keep pulling up these Grant Hills like this is not the one. Urgh. Yo, and then, oh, that's, I'm about to say, I'm, I'm looking at this shoe. I'm like, that's a Shaq shoe. That's a Reebok. Nope. Bro, they go, um, King Griffey Juniors. Dude, this, these are bringing back memories. I used to sell all of these shoes. If I spelled endorsed correctly. I'm sorry, I keep going down this rat hole trying to find these shoes because it's irking me now and I can't find them. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, dude, anybody on earth ever had shoes up hill? Only boxer in the 90s that was hot enough was Tyson and Holyfield. Maybe they were Holyfields. There might have been Eli Holyfield. Damn it. I'm pulling up everything. Under the sun, but damn Felas. Dude, these these sneakers. And they were they were red, white, and blue. The majority of the shoe was white. And Look at 
All right, I'm gonna stop looking. It's not Polo with the horse. <laughs> you know, Calvin and Joy, I know Polo is our shorts. That's not Grant Hill. Venom Hayabusa. Hayabusa? Hayabusa to me is always the um, motorcycle. Oh, they had an outline all the way around the outside of the shoe. This is Grant Hill. This must have been there after it fell off. Made a hospital shoe. Because he was always injured. Let me find you a proper link to the hills. No, nah, dude, not. Marlon, what up? He says, oh, I'm late. Hey, yo. <laughs> you need some MB 502s. Uh, listen, I <laughs> knew I don't. That's another one where I'm just 502s. New balance. New balance 502s. No, I did. I have a pair of those back in the day. You mean 520s, not 502s? 520s, Roger. Yeah, I think you might be might be talking about five 520s, not 502s. Um. Hmm. Like I said, 1977, we didn't. Bell Iverson shoes feel Marlin. <laughs> I bet Marlin just like me when he was young. I bet you he didn't. Go ahead and tell Marlin what you wore, and he's going to. He probably going to choke on his cigar smoke. Mm. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the Grand Hills. I'm telling you, it wasn't them. Tyson and Brandon Holyfield and the weirdest barbecue. Weird link found. Scunny shoes with scorchers hot for a whole like a whole year. I remember everyone in high school had those. Didn't think they looked good. Yo, but the triangles, dog. The triangles on the bottom of the Sockenies. Yo, that was the thing that did it. And it was like you, you like the the Sockenies were. They were New Balances. That the Saucony. I, I'm trying to. Oh man, the plane. And like I said, we used to call them Saucony. Um, I'm trying to. I'm trying to find the basic, basic channels. But they always had the triangles on the bottom. I had a, a couple pair. Old school. I don't want running shoes. I just want old school. Men's old school. And they were always running shoes. Don't get me wrong. But, oh, this is it right here. This one. This is the one. That one right there. Yo. If I could find, oh, 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 yo, man, oh, you can't see, there it is, the triangle, bruh, talk about taking me back, that's like 96, 97 right there, man, you used to have a pair of those, and those, they, these were actually a little different, I'm about to order some, just like, bruh, let's see, let's, let's do it, Oh, there's a 12 in black. Oh, it was a hundred dollars. Man. Talk about taking me back. Bruh. Oh, they won't be here for two weeks. That's no good. Oh man. It's my but I'm still alive. Oh, Jimmy says that, so I guess it's a good thing, yeah. In a, in a new about 508s. Let's see, 508. Whoops. 508. New balance. No. Westgate 508? No, sir. I never was into those like board shoes. So, 515s. And then the, was a 702? Is that the number? Are the other ones? Trying 
237s. Oh, 574s. That was the one. 574s was, was, and still, like, my son was wearing a pair of 574s today. Hold on. These right here, definitely classic New Balance. So, I had a friend um, across the street. He used to, like, he used to rock New Balances. Then these ones right here, the 574s, was almost the only ones that he would wear. He had a navy or black, so black and white, gray and white. So some of the kids in my kid at, at Taste Us, some of the kids at Taste Us Number Two School have the the burgundy and white because they're they're that's their school colors. They're maroon and gold, uh, black on black, black and gray, white and green, harvest gold, yo, know, blue Nimbus. Man, talk about. Bro, bro, I'm not even a sneakerhead, like for real. I am so basic when it comes to sneakers. Even still, like now, that's why I'm like, you know, I rock Crocs. I I'd rather spend fifty dollars on a pair of Crocs and, and buy some firearms. <laughs> Forget it. Uh Quentin says, nope, crisscross pants, Timberlands, silk shirts. Oh goodness, this south is showing. Hey, my man said the silk shirts. Cross colors, <laughs> Tim's. Yo. I went through my skater phase for a summer. I had the big ass DC shoes and my skateboard went in every store with me. I thought it was tough. Yup, those are the exact show style everyone had. Russ says, when Dash finds these shoes, they will be available on his first day. <laughs> Don't forget that thumbs up. Shoot, that damn autocorrect won't let me live. Yeah, those are the typical white, white Dash shoes. No, nah, yeah, no. Nah. 574 MBs are the new. They're not new. We had 574s when I was a kid, dog. Like, I vividly remember 574s and a friend of mine wearing 574s. Or, let's see, 502s? I don't know why I'm thinking 502. No, you said something about 502. And if it wasn't 5, 574s, here's a 515. It's this classic sneaker. But I swear it was a 574. I'm looking at. This is a not no, it's not the 990. 574s, man. Shoot, I'm, I'm not saying I remember them. Like, remember them. Let's see, New Balance. Oh, man. Oh, I feel like I need to go out to Wikipedia and find this damn sneaker. Uh, Quentin says, I was also a whole thug. Timeout. Quentin, you were never, ever, ever a thug. I don't care who said what about you. You were never a thug, sir. Never. Let's continue this message. Uh, this, this, this. Hold on. Shout out. And, you know, time out. Uh, shout out to those of you guys who are re-watching this. I uh, just want to say thank you guys. And comment what your favorite sneaker was from back in the day uh, when you are re-watching this. So, everyone who is re-watching, stop what you're doing Take a moment, comment down below what your favorite back in the day sneaker is. Um, 524, not 574. Let's see. NB 524. Yeah, no, I'm still coming up with 574. Unless they change the number and the, the 574 is not available. All right, so Quentin says he was a whole thug for two weeks trying to date this chick. Bought a whole FUBU outfit with the big ass five front and back. Um, so FUBU was 45. 45. Um, <clears throat> big ass 05 front and back. Carl Kanai jean suit with the hat to match. She didn't write me back. <laughs> Called her a garden implement. So. Speaking of Carl Kanai, I totally forgot about Carl Kanai. Let me just tell you how old I am. Taste tester number one went on some website and purchased a vintage t-shirt. Vintage t-shirt, vintage shirt, hoodie, something. And we were doing something and he put it on. He had it on. And I looked at it, and I was like, oh, my God. Where did you get that Carl Kanai shirt? He said, is that what that says? 
He didn't even know what it was. Talk about, like, head in hand. I was like, bruh, you're wearing a designer shirt from when I was your age. He was like, yeah, well, the website said it was vintage, this, that, and the other, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I didn't even know. He's like, I couldn't read it. I'm like, K-A-N-I. Kanai. He's like, wow, Kanai. I said, but it's not just Kanai. It's Carl Kanai. K-A-R-L-K-A-N-I. Carl Kanai. And I felt like I had to explain to him what Carl Kanai was or who Carl Kanai was. And I'm like, bruh, I never wore Carl Kanai because, again, it was one of those off-brand you nah, I didn't know it was off limits. <clears throat> I never, I had one. I swear, I had one Fubu jersey. One maybe, and that was towards the end, or was one of those. I no, actually, you know what? I had two Fubu jerseys, but they were two different colors, and I would wear them like outfit type wise. I was thugged out, bro. Jeans were size 30. I wore 16. Out of here. Damn, guys, when I was in high school, we looked for something that was easy to wash the cow crap off of. Uh, tell me you was not a thug without saying you was not the thug. When you and you tell us you were a thug for a whole two weeks. Exactly. Quentin says FUBU was absolutely number five. Hold on. FUBU number. See, mm -mm. well, so he's got 05, so maybe it was 2005. No, it wasn't 2005. There were different numbers, but I don't, the, 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 yeah, because I'm seeing, a, I'm going to say a bunch. I'm seeing different numbers, but yeah, because I, no, this is 05 as well. I mean, maybe I'm just, maybe I'm misremembering. It could happen. But I do see a lot of fives. But I swear mine was 45. Um, because it was the number 45 was um, for the 45 record. Oh, maybe that's why. So it was um, the Boys to Men. Fubu Boys to Men. That one was 45 because it was an homage to the 45 record. Gosh, man. Let me see. Fubu. Boys to men. There's still a FUBU store. No, FUBU is still. Mm, 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 mm. I'm going to close that window right now. Anyway, remember how you love sneakers so much, but you still wore it even when it started to laugh in the front. So luckily, Steven, I didn't. Um, I didn't experience that. I used to. I'll say I used to take care of my shoes, but it, yeah, <laughs> Russ is a garden implement. I couldn't keep thugging, Marlon. That was hilarious. The garden implement. Certain friends that fell in those crazy trends. Look them up now. Off brand. Yes, indeed. Please stop buying clothes you can't read. Yo, clothing. Exactly. If your food shirt said forty five, you brought it from a kiosk in the mall for three dollars and it melted in a washing machine. No, man, it was a jersey. And it was one of those, like, it, I swear, it was like an homage to, or maybe it was a special run or older run or something, but it was an homage to Boys to Men um, and the fact that the records, 
again, something else I feel like, at least I, that's what I'm remembering, it was an homage to the records. I got the gator shake and the bird shake tonight. Might try it on Easter turkey if it gets here in time. Um, It's Wednesday. I don't know. That, that, that might be some miracle work, but if, if, so it'll go out Thursday, that means it has until Saturday to get to you. I'm pretty sure more often than not, Uncle Steve sends out a lot of the stuff like two day priority. If we got food, you said it was good with those boxer felines you can't find either. Mm. All of a sudden, my eyes itching. Um, and for Dave, I was telling Quentin to read between the lines. Uh, Bruh, dude, talk about memory lane. Mm. Did Holyfield have a, a sneaker? Let's see. Did Holyfield have a sneaker? Hammer pants. <laughs> Never wore the hammer pants. I did have a gold chain with the no limit tank though. Oh my god, bro. I can say I had a pair of hammer pants. I remember one Easter we had hammer pants. And I say we, my brother and I, my younger brother and I had hammer pants. That I I know there is a picture. Um <laughs> Uh, and I, I think my aunt got us these hammer pants because my aunt was cooler than my mom was. Mm. Mm. How do you feel? Feel our shoe. Because everything I was pulling up was the. Gosh, back to the damn great news. It wasn't one of those. Alright, who's another prominent boxer? Back. Because. It wasn't the Grand Hills. I'm not. I'm not misremembering that one. I had a cheat sheet broken for two weeks, and I used paper clips to hold it down for another two months. I'm a Georgia historian. Dash asked me about Evander. Uh, <laughs> Dave's a damn that itchy eye again. I also wore breakaway sweatpants for a whole month. Then I got cold, and those were stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Buster Douglas. All right, let's see. Buster Douglas. Shoe. Google. No. That is Buster Browns. I remember them. That's an ugly move forward, dear. I'm gonna keep looking for this damn shoe. Um. <laughs> Evander was an Everlast guy. It wasn't Foreman's. Let's see, boxers. 
boxer, sneaker, endorsements. I say drawing the blank here, but I can see these shoes in my head, and these aren't it. And it wasn't the stack houses, because that was this is another one I remember. Yeah, stack twos. Mm -mm, it wasn't them. Making is basically flow to. Huh. Since we hit the kind of on the temperature is twenty degrees warm. <laughs> Making rather. Mm. Bruh. This is irking me. As you can tell, this is irking me. Say big mad, but irking the hell out of me. Ain't nobody rocking stack houses exactly. No, definitely wasn't BKs. It, it was well after BKs, and I mm -mm. BKs were another one I didn't touch. Like didn't go near British Knights. Didn't go near. Oh, you look so funny. Um, there's a there's a British Knights. Are you looking? At? Looking at Grand Hills for real. The outline around the shoe. Shows the shoe. Yes, man. All right. So let's see here. I'm going to scroll back up to the top of the page so I can point out. All right. Those are Grand Hills. Grand Hills. That's not what it was. It wasn't those. Um, and then there's another version of Grant Hills. This is another version of Grant Hills, and that's the Shack shoe right there. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't the Grant Hills. Um, here's oh shoot, come on. Here's another version of Grant Hills right here, right there, and the oh. These are stack houses. <clears throat> mm -mm. Stack house. Um, he played for the for the Sixers, didn't he? More time. The shoe beside the stacks is what I'm talking about. That's no, those aren't the shoes that I'm talking about. All right, he's the only person from Fila I remember. Um, so, oh, but I wanted to show. There's you know there's some BKs. I top BKs from back in the day. This one, this is the one you're talking about, Quentin. Um, this, where's my finger? There it is. That one right there. Those are the Grand Hills I remember too, or as well. I'm trying to see if the one I'm thinking of is in there anywhere, and it's not. Dude, I'm telling you, I can, when I say I can see this shoe. And then the I'll say the worst part is, like I said, he was rocking the shoes for a while, and then was was um he ghosted me to use today's terminology, and I couldn't find him. I swear it might have been Holyfield. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember any other fire feel out besides the hills. They weren't fire. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Clinton. They were boy on shoes. 
they were boiling. That's why I was like, yo, she bought me two pairs of them. Was it De it wasn't De La Hoya. No. This is all newer stuff. I see Mayweather. Nah, it definitely wasn't Mayweather. Cause Mayweather has the 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 money team, TMT. I'm like, what is it? What is this TMT? Mm -mm, it's well before TMT. God damn it. I'm, yo, they have like crossroads. Maybe just because I'm doing too much and I'm searching for sneakers and just, I'm just keep pulling up felines, but I'm getting Grant Hills again. Mall and Hagler. <laughs> I was a medium sneakerhead uh, back in the day, low key. I was not a sneakerhead. I told you, Nikes, Sacconis, and Tims. Like there was a two-year stretch where I wore nothing but Tims all summer long. Tims, 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 Tims. That was it. That's all I wore. Let's see, nineties. Let's say ninety. Five. Fila. So Grant Hill had a Fila in 95. But it wasn't the Grant Hills. It wasn't the Grant Hills. Stackhouse. Fila. I swear it was a boxer. A boxer. The Feline 95 sneaker returns in this OG white and navy colorway. Dude, I, I, mm -mm. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say accept it because that's not it. This was, this was 95. But let's see, no, let's see, Fila 94. when you have stuff from 30 years ago before the internet and before pic people took pictures of every damn thing under the sun I feel like I need to look at like Fila's Wikipedia webpage or something cause it's bugging the hell out of me the hags I would wear Cortez before Fila so I, I wasn't like I knew what Cortez's were because I worked in a sneaker store. But before I worked in the sneaker store, if you'd have told me Cortez's, I don't even know what that was. Uh remember the East Bay book though? That was our gospel in school. So I was on the tail end of the East Bay stuff. Like I never ordered, never ever got to order anything out of the East Bay book. I used to look at the East Bay book from time to time, but that was that was about it. And it was always somebody else's. Like it was never mine. Maybe a baseball player, Kenny Lofton, comes to mind. But I think he was Nike. You know, it was Ken Griffey. Ken Griffey Jr. <laughs> Hulk Hulk said, I still got East Bay. Ken Griffey. Yeah, Griffey. They weren't Griffey's. Trust me. I know I know Ken Griffey's. Um, again, that's another one that I used to sell the hell out of. Um Back in the day, man. What's crazy is maybe it was '93. I'm just going back further and further. Fila '93. 
excuse me. They were, they were basketball shoes for sure. Basketball-ish, mid, like a mid top. It wasn't a high top. It was like a mid. It wasn't the Grant Hill twos. It wasn't the Grant Hills. It wasn't the Grant Hill twos. And it wasn't this one that's called the Disruptor. That's ugly. <laughs> uh, Mizuno's never had a pair of Mizuno's aside from like um, never yeah never had a pair of Mizuno's but I knew what Mizuno's were because of um, sports um, track cleats and baseball cleats I actually think my son has a pair of Mizuno's sitting on the side of the house um, that are baseball cleats yeah, as well as 10 o'clock. I was going to say, I can go out there and get them. But opening the door, the alarm is set. Oh, this is bugging me. Quentin, expect a text message from me when I find these damn shoes. Because when I find these damn shoes, best believe you getting a text message. Like, this was them. I feel like I need to look up... Viva Wikipedia. This is very... Hmm. Hmm. Fila shifted his focus from clothing in Europe to footwear in the U.S., and completed the buyout of his U.S. license. High-profile sponsorships included basketball players Grant Hill and Jerry Stackhouse helped make Fila's America's Fastest growing Fila brand in 1995. So I'm on the right page in the right era when I'm like 94, 95. But, brah, oh my gosh. Hmm. Hmm. Boots. Where is the I need to find out, like, who else did feel I endorse in the 90s? Like, yeah. <laughs> Russ says, you sure this wasn't two guys fighting at school? Nope, it's probably so bummed. <laughs> it wasn't, it was a boxer, man. It was a boxer. Huh. Rockets, Kenny, Chet Smith, no. Zips with the Velcro. Hmm. Uh, Russ's baked great baseball gloves. Yeah. Hulk Hawks is this a Korean shoe? The Elijah or some shit. <laughs> uh, receive it for him. No, it wasn't a Tumbo. I mean, it was a boxer, man. It was a boxer. Breeze says, Do I make traditional Baltimore pit beef? The answer is no. I do not. Um, he would have mentioned him because he's a big name. No, it wasn't Matumbo. Uh, so, the whole thing is, one of the guys who frequents the live stream and has my contact information, his name is Victor. We call him, I call him, Santa, or, um, Salmon Claus. I say Santa, sorry. 
my 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 barbecue sauce my, my my sauce is kicking in um but he sent me a text message earlier today he said uh just heard about this can you talk about baltimore pit and i'm like huh so to bring it full circle he was referring to Baltimore pit meats. And I say it's a common thing, but in Baltimore there is pit beef, pit turkey, and pit ham. I don't know of any other pit meats. But those are the main staples when it comes to pit here in Baltimore. I don't make it. I do barbecue. Pit meats are grilling to me. Um and I've I've remained and, and maintained the same stance for years um russ says hey don't forget to hit that thumbs up uh like and comment and hey hit dash or uh, hey hit that merch shot uh, store for more thank you very much mm, little john and little scrappy should be the face of fila they're like the new school face of fila um but I swear they took the FILA, F-I-L-A, and they made that acronym work for Forever I Love Atlanta. Because from, from someone who was outside of Atlanta, outside of Georgia, I never heard that Forever I Love Atlanta, like moniker, slogan, song, before I was an adult. Uh, but there are, you know, regional, let's say regional rappers, regional rappers and music artists that never make it big enough to the national stage. And that, I want to say that Fila or Forever I Love Atlanta song was one of those songs to me because I, like I said, I never heard it until way later in life. Never, ever heard it. But then the whole thing is like, there are plenty of people who go to Atlanta, hang out in Atlanta, or in Georgia, let's say in Georgia, um, and they take that Atlanta sound, that Atlanta music to other places, and then there's pockets of folks who are big fans. Peter McNeely? No. Uh, all right, I got to hit, uh, hit up early tomorrow. Have a great night and stay safe. Yes, Russ, you too. I'm going to be ending this soon. I'm saying I'm running out of steam, but I have nothing else to say to, to Quentin. Um, I feel like I'm going to be up looking for this damn sneaker, though. I just got to figure out what to look for to find it. Because when you search for Fila's, the Grant Hills, Jerry Stackhouse's, that's... And I mean, rightfully so. Their Wikipedia article was, was sparse. Um, yeah. This is the Fila company. Yeah. Let's see. F-I-L-A. No, this is... Nope, not that. They're not fired. That was the whole that Quentin. This is what I'm saying. The fire, the, the sneakers were so boing yoing that I I didn't like I didn't like them. I I'm telling you, my mom bought two two of these shoes, and one was a half size bigger than the other. And the whole thing was. And it must have been like around Easter that she bought me these shoes because I know I wore them through that summer. And my mom's, I say my mom's boyfriend at the time, but my mom's friend at the time was like, oh, we're going to get two different pair, two pair of the same ones because you like the shoe, right? And I'm like, no, I really don't. But like, but these on sale, so we're going to get these shoes. Bruh. <laughs> Bruh. And I mean, 
I had two pair of them and I didn't like them. So that's why I sold them to, to this guy. And next week I'm gonna shame while I'm wearing my hoodie or I'm returning. Well, I hate to be the bear of bad news, but um it's gonna take a couple weeks for you to get that hoodie. But um and it's getting ready to get cold, man. You should have got a long sleeve t shirt or a t shirt. But in other news, they googling a song right now. Oh yeah. Dude, I'm taking off. Alright, Dave, have a good one. Dude, I am I'm 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 leaving these windows open so that tomorrow or late yeah tomorrow I can look into these because I'm like yo I gotta I gotta find these shoes and I I know they weren't Grand Hill it was a boxer it was a boxer I just can't remember what boxer Jimmy says okay guys I'm going to bounce have a great rest of the week later Dash thanks Jimmy you take care. All right, we're at two and a half hours. I'm going to go ahead and call it quits. I'm going to call it because... Mm. I can't figure out, find out, remember what damn sneaker it was. Steven says, night, y'all. Take care and have yourselves a safe and happy Easter weekend. Yes, sir. Hog Hog says, nobody looks at the boxer's feet. It was just an endorsement, man. It wasn't like a sneaker that he wore in a ring. It was just an endorsement, which I'm sure is not helping because, just like he said, nobody's looking at the boxer's feet. Anyway, um, I got to find a list of Fila's endorsements. Dorn. Let's see. Athlete. Fila. Endorsements. Nineteen ninety three. Jamal Mashburn and Hershey Hawking. Let's see here. This one. How Fila took over the culture in the 80s and 90s. Fila was started in 1911. Yada yada. Got swag in tennis. Hip hop. Hip hop turned into sneaker culture. They signed Grand Hill. Um, Grand Hill has several sneakers, but the Grand Hill 2s provided to be the shoe that the culture latched on to. Most rappers still clamor from today, and many sneaker has dubbed them the forefather of chubby dad shoes. Okay. Nice. Here we go with Fila. No. 25 year. No. Urgh. This wasn't it. It didn't help me. Encyclopedia.com. Grand Hill. Yo, Fila is headquartered right up the street in Sparks, Maryland. Or at least Fila USA is headquartered in in Maryland. I did not know that. Um, Ninety four and ninety six. USA climbed from seventh place to aesthetic of footwear. Grant Hills. Come on. Yeah, Sparks is literally, it's like Sparks is up there by Timonium. It's in that same general vicinity. All right, so let's see. The basketball player market, the roster included Stackhouse, Mashburn, Hershey Hawkins, Grant Hill, but there was a boxer.
The target market. Several years later, Fila began producing its own athletic shoes. The company held a pivotal focus group with 12 to 18 year olds that altered the direction of the company's marketing efforts. The youth said they could not relate to Fila at all. Fila shoes seemed more like fashion statements than something to wear for playing sports. <laughs> According to the American demographics, most athletic shoes were actually worn by non athletic situations. Where style was more important than performance for most wearers, what mattered was looking cool in school. Yes. Nevertheless, or nonetheless, excuse me, even the least athletic kids <laughs> were looking to inner city basketball courts for cues to what to wear. Um... Top 10 endorses a 97. Athlete annual endorsement income in millions. Michael Jordan, Grant Hill, Tiger Woods, Shaq, Arnold Palmer, Andre Agassi, Jack Nicholas, Joe Montana, Ken Griffey Jr., and Deion Sanders. Wow. Roger is sending attachments to my friend group. And it still tell me it was a boxer. It was a boxer, it was a boxer. I'm just trying to pop out, like look for a name. Cause it said it's ninety-eight. Ninety-eight was too was too late. Mm. Footwear Association. Oh, man. 2000. Nope, this is way too far after. Dang it. I thought I was, I thought I was on to something. Oh, well. All right, look. I'm going to go ahead and end it. I was trying to. No, it wasn't Jamal Mashburn. Uh, Hog Hog says the headquarters has to be in Korea. Uh, look at this shoe. Look at that shoe. It wasn't Mashburn's. I know for sure it wasn't Jamal Mashburn. Um, yeah, Sparks, Maryland. They are not very far away. Um, or the U.S. headquarters, excuse me, is in Sparks, Maryland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one feel way, Sparks, Maryland. Let's see how far is it away from my house. Let's go maps. From home. Directions. From home. 28 minutes, yep. Oh, so Sparks is north of Timonium, like Hunt Valley, Sparks, Hunt Valley, Sparks. Like, yo, what if I went there? What if I went there and was like, yo, I need to find these shoes. <laughs> it's not that far away. Half an hour. Y'all want to take a field trip to 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 <laughs> to Feli's headquarters right now? <laughs> oh, I'm a, yeah. Hog says he's out. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate you hanging out. Definitely, definitely. Quentin says, see y'all later. Have a good night. Night, night. Mm. Definitely be easy. Thank you guys so very much. If you haven't already, uh, please hit that thumbs up. And if you are re-watching this, I mean, mm. did you ever have any felines? Did you ever have any felines? Like I said, I was forced to wear felines and I didn't like it. 
All right, guys, I think I am I'm done for the evening. Thank you so very much for hanging out. Really do appreciate you being here. And um, peace. I'm gone.